may be seated. Uh, We're continuing a series called Gifted, where we are looking at uh, several gifts of the Spirit. As Dana mentioned last week, there's uh, a lot of gifts of the Spirit. We are only looking at nine in this particular series. And and if you did miss the sermon last week, Dana gave an overview of the gifts of the Spirit. I would recommend that you get online at our website, resurrectionsurfside.org, and check those out. If you have your Bibles with you, could you please turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12? Or if you want to uh, grab one of the Pew Bibles, we're looking at page 959 this morning. And we're going to look at the gift of administration. But before we continue, let me pray for us one more time. Almighty God, who pour out on all who desire it the spirit of grace and supplication, Deliver us when we draw near to Thee from coldness of heart and wanderings of mind that with steadfast thoughts and kindled affections we may worship Thee in spirit and in truth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to give you a brief overview of what's going on in the first 11 chapters of 1 Corinthians. Uh, This is a letter written by the Apostle Paul to the church in Corinth, and after the Apostle Paul gives a thanksgiving and, uh, for this church, and after he greets them, he starts to uh, instruct them, and he starts to address the fact that they have divisions between them. And he, he addresses divisions, uh, sexual immorality, arrogance, lawsuits among believers, marriage, uh, living out one's calling. We'll talk a little bit about that today eating food that's been offered to idols. He talks about that, properly partaking in the Lord's Supper. And so he's addressing a lot of things in these first 11 chapters. And as he gets to chapter 12, he starts to address our spiritual gifts. And he says in this that there are a variety of gifts, but there is one spirit. And what Paul is trying to get at is that we all have equal value as far as our gifts are concerned. Uh, We all are on the same page. One may have the gift of administration and one may have the gift of prophecy, but it doesn't lower the value of that uh, gift. It doesn't, it's it's as important as any other gift. I mean, as we meant, you know, the body parts that were talked about in the uh, New Testament passage, an ear is just as important as a nose, so to speak. And that's the way that we look at the body of Christ, that we have these gifts. And we see a little bit more of the importance of these gifts and uh, an encouragement about these gifts, that they are equal in verse 18. If you can look at verse 18 in chapter 12, it says, But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. So we've got these gifts, and it's, guess what? It's because God chose you to have this gift. That ought to be good news for you. It ought to be good news for me as well, that uh, I don't have to look at Chip's gift or Dana's gift and say, hey, I wish I had that. You know, it, it rules out all jealousy because God's the one that gave us these gifts. God's the one that imparts the gifts on us, so it puts us all on the same page. I don't know if you are or were um, one of the kids on the playground who were uh, chosen last, or maybe even growing up in your family, you felt like you were dismissed or um, that you weren't cared for. Well, the good news in the gospel is that in this, we see that God is the one who chooses, that no matter where you are, that God has chosen you for a purpose, and you serve him out of that purpose. And so we're grateful. We're very grateful for that. It puts us all on the same page, that the God of the universe has chosen you for a purpose and to use those gifts as a purpose. By the way, we have confirmation class going on. That's why people are getting up, leaving, in case you're wondering. <laughs> and we're grateful for that too. So we have, we have these gifts, and they're given by God. And as Dana said last week, I'll paraphrase it, you're never retired from your faith. You're never retired from serving. God always calls us to serve. I was watching, uh, my cousin is involved. Uh, she's involved in a group called, uh, I think it's Jen. Gen X or something. It's a mission organization. And one of their big themes is you're always on mission. That means like right now you are on mission. You're, you're, you're not just on mission if you go out to the mission field. You know, I was a missionary in Ireland. I wasn't simply a missionary when I was in Ireland, but I was in a, you know, I'm a missionary now. 
I'm in a missionary when I go home and care for my family. I mean, you know, that's what we use these gifts for. We're, we're always called to use our gifts uh, to build them up for the body of Christ, for the advancement of the kingdom. And this is important to understand because you can live in them. I mean, you have to know what they are so you can live in them. And I would encourage you, if you have not done so, to go on our website and take the gift survey. You just, on the very first page, it's one of the little, uh, one of the little sections at the bottom. It'll say gift survey. You just click on that, and it'll take you right to that. So this morning, we're looking at administration. We're going to look at two things in the gift of administration. One, what is the gift of administration? And two, how do we use the gift of administration? Now, gifts overall, in general, are this. A spiritual gift is any ability that is empowered by the Holy Spirit and used in any ministry of the church. This broad definition includes both gifts that are related to natural abilities, such as teaching, showing mercy, or administration, and gifts that seem to be more miraculous and less related to natural abilities, such as prophecy, healing, or distinguishing between spirits. That's Wayne Grudem. So the gift of administration would be one of those natural abilities that uh, Grudem is refer to, referring to a natural ability that is empowered by the Holy Spirit and used for ministry in the church and the advancement of God's kingdom. So uh, you could have someone out in the working world that has the gift of administration, but in the sense of our Christian faith, the gift of administration, it has to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. That's what makes this gift different is that it's empowered by the Holy Spirit, used for the advancement of God's kingdom, and used for the building up of the church. So it's a natural ability. Now, in the Greek, it means to steer a ship, to guide or lead or govern, the gift of administration. So now, this doesn't mean that if you have the gift of administration that you need to quit your job and learn how to drive a boat, but it does mean that you need to think about hey, this means that I am, I am to be in maybe a, uh, a role where I can direct things, where I can guide things, where I can uh, be a part of guiding. You know, maybe you're part of a, uh, the serve team or you're a part of, the, um, part of the encounter team where you help guide the church. It guides and directs a group of people toward a goal or a destination. Gift of administration, the Holy Spirit enables certain Christians to organize, direct, and implement plans to lead others in various ministries of the church. This gift is closely related to the gift of leadership, but is more goal or task-oriented and is also more concerned with details and organization. That's on uh, www.spiritualgifttest.com. So we see there's a difference in leadership and administration. When Mercedes and I lived in North Carolina, well, we had a friend of ours that was a successful businessman. He, uh, he started and sold several companies, and they all did really well. He had vision. He, he knew which direction to go in. But the details, if you, when you got to know him, details were not his forte. He had to have administrators around him to drive the ship, so to speak, and, and dodge any of the icebergs, you know, go to the left and go to the right. But he had the vision. He had the leadership. So there is a difference in leadership, or in leadership and administration. So as you look, as you start to get on the website and you survey these different spiritual gifts and the gift of administration pops up, you want to do a couple of things. You want to ask the Lord, Lord, how do you want to use me uh, with this gift? What do you want me to do with this gift to serve you? And second, you want to look for opportunities to serve. You know, we have uh, vestry, uh, we have vestry nominations coming up soon. You may want to pray that maybe the Lord wants you to do that, or is calling you to do vestry, or maybe you want to be a part of, uh, you know, a team that helps steer the church. We're still looking for home group facilitators. If you have this gift, you would be a great home group facilitator. So the Lord is. Uh, those are a few opportunities where you can step in. Now, how do we use the gift of administration? We, we see what it is, but how do we use it? Now, there's a dark and a light side to the spiritual gifts. Now, I'm well aware, if you're a Star Wars fan, that I missed out on a great opportunity to put up a picture of Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker. I'd like to apologize for that now. 
I should have thought of that earlier. But there is a dark and a light side to our spiritual gifts, uh, a side where we uh, use our gifts uh, in the wrong way and a side where we use them in the right way. And, and the dark side of the gift, and the dark and the light, that's a term I stole from Ron, in case you're wondering. Uh, the gift becomes, on the, the dark side, the gift becomes greater than the giver. That means you're not, you're not looking to Christ. You're not asking the Holy Spirit. You're just saying, hey, I got this gift. It's about me. I'm going to use my gift all for me. De- the details, the organization becomes your righteousness. That's where you lean all of your hope is on the gift instead of leaning your, all your hope in the triune God. How, how you steer the ship becomes your hope. It's all about you steering the ship. You know, the goal is the, is the end. If I can just get to the goal. Setting goals is okay, but we rely on Christ. We rely, we ask the Holy Spirit to lead us. And so that's the dark side. But there's also the right side, the correct side, the light side to using your gifts. If you can look at verse 31, it says this, uh, but earnestly desire the higher gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. So in this verse, Paul is encouraging the church to ask for the higher gifts. He, or the gifts that are most effective in building up the church community. It doesn't mean that those gifts are uh, any of, of any more value or lesser value in the kingdom economy. They just serve a different purpose. But then he says something else. He, there, he says that there is even a more excellent way than, in, than asking for these higher gifts. There's even a more excellent way than seeking them. And what he's doing here is he's teaching us how to use the gift of these gifts. Because, you know, when the Bible was written, there were no chapters and there were no verses. So chapter 12 and chapter 13, they ran together. So when you read chapter 12 into 13, you want to think, well, 12 is saying something about 13 and 13 is saying something about 12. So what Paul's doing here is he's showing us how to use this gift. And so how, how do we use this gift? Well, it's the very first verse in chapter 13. And he says... If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. You know, this is something we usually see at weddings, right? This is, you know, how, how do you love one another? Well, this is for the church, friends. This isn't simply just for when you get married. This is for the church. And what Paul is saying here is that we may be the greatest administrator in the world, but if we don't do it out of love out of Christ's love, then we're just making noise. We're just a banging gong. We're just, uh, it's self-centered. And this is what makes Christianity unique. You know, you may have someone that is a good administrator, but what, what Paul is saying is, says, look, if you aren't doing it out of, if you're not asking the Holy Spirit to guide you in the spiritual gift, if you are not learning how to love by looking at the one who loved you first, Jesus Christ, then you're just making noise. It's a different, it's a different kind of gift. It's a different way to use your gift. And so that's what he's saying here. Now, uh, oh yeah, if you go to also to chapter, um, to the book of John in uh, chapter 4, Verse 7 through 11, it says this. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love God does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. So how do we know how to love? Well, we look at Christ and what he did on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. I mean, that's what propitiation means. It's taking, taking away the wrath of God towards us. That's how we know how to love other people as we look at Christ. We look at the cross. And we ask the Holy Spirit to help us to know how to love people in these gifts, in this gift of of administration. You may have seen the, uh, 
You know, I love, I've told you guys before, I love movies. I love superhero movies. And in the 2010 uh, version of Spider-Man, where Tobey Maguire is the lead character, he, uh, he just gets his spidey powers. You know, he gets by the sp- bits by the spider. And he confronts this guy, this bully at school, and he and this bully get in a, get in a fight, and he pummels this bully. And later that evening, he's sitting in the car with his uncle, Uh, talking about this incident, and his uncle says this, just remember, even though you may have the strength to beat this guy up, does not mean that you ought to. With great power comes great responsibility. You know, and that's kind of what we're getting at here, is that this gift that God has given you, whether it's administration or any of the other gifts, we have a responsibility to use it, to ask the Holy Spirit to lead us and to guide us, to look at the cross and say, that's how God has loved me. God has loved me with with great grace and great forgiveness so that I now have great hope. And we have this new, fresh energy to love, and the Holy Spirit directs us, and we have this new way of loving others instead of being a banging gong. Friends, if you don't know this love, but want to, I would encourage you to go to the prayer station today. And whoever's over there say, look, uh, I just don't even know if I'm a Christian or not. Will you pray with me? Or maybe you, you do know this love of Christ and you want to go to the prayer station and say, I've got this gift, but I have no idea what the Lord wants, how he wants me to use it. Will you pray with me? And you can go over to the prayer station and somebody will pray for you. Friends, prayer works. I mean, that is, that is how we function, is we pray and we pray and we pray. And the Lord hears our prayers. He does not ignore our prayers. And so do that today. I mean, this is why the word gospel means good news, because Christ's work on the cross has got a hold of you. And it won't let you go, even when you feel like it has let you go. Even when you look at your own gifts and say, oh, I've done nothing with my gifts. Christ won't let go of you. So go to him for the first time today or for the, for the millionth time today. For the millionth time, go to him. Go ask for prayer and he will answer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're grateful that you have given us these gifts and Uh, that you haven't left us alone and we're grateful for the Holy Spirit that guides and directs us. And I pray for all the gifts, but especially today for those who have the gift of administration, that you would show them where to serve and that they would love out of your love, Lord. And so, Spirit, will you fill us up? Will you direct us and guide us? If there are those here that are on the fence, um, Even if if it's the first time to know you, Lord, I pray that they would uh, go to the prayer station and and ask for prayer today. And so we're grateful for you, Lord. God, we're just grateful that you showed so much grace on it, that you chose us. That is just, that is, um, what a gift, that you would look at us and you would choose us, even in our fallen nature, even in our brokenness, that you would say, I'm going to give you this gift. I pray that we would say, Lord, bring it on. And so we're grateful to you and we give you all the glory in Christ's name. Amen.